Good morning and welcome to Trail Grazers, where we talk about preparing foods and going on the trail with those foods. When I say going on the trail, uh, we have several options. We, of course, as those of you who have subscribed and are following us know, we love to ride our four-wheelers, and so that is one type of food that we carry. We also occasionally will do some tent camping, and that's another type of food and kitchen setup. Then um, we have a trailer where we, it's a toy hauler, so we haul our four-wheelers and go to places like Bryce Canyon, where we have the opportunity of camping in our trailer and riding our four-wheelers. We're about to add another aspect to our channel, which is um, car trips, day trips or just car traveling, and how we uh, are going to be doing meals just by traveling in our car. And we've already done a video or two on that. We have not done a video for over a month, sadly. And the reason for that is that we have been stuck at home. It has been both weather related and home repair related. We have remodeled our kitchen. It is not finished yet. That's the other reason that we have been having to stick close to home is because we have workmen coming in day after day. We had roof repairs. So I've been retired now for three months and stuck at home. And so we think that is about to change and we're getting ready for that. We have a few trips planned for the warm weather. Right now, our trailer is still winterized uh, and we are getting freezing weather still. So it will be probably a couple of weeks. We will dewinterize that trailer and then start with our trips. Some will be longer where we haul our four wheelers in the trailer, others we will not. So we are rethinking some of the ways that we're going to be doing food. And so we're gonna bring you along for all of these changes that are happening to us and um, hope that you enjoy. Some of it will be kind of struggles and new experimentation, but that's what this channel is all about so that uh, we can share what we are learning as we go. Since my retirement, I have been working on a new bread book. We have our own bookstore, as you know. We are offering now our canning classes through our bookstore. Everything that we offer now is through our bookstore I've been working on this bread book, which will be released at the end of April. I have learned a lot of things. Um, on our Rose Red channel, on our community page, I put out a question, would you like to see some videos using a bread machine? Now, I have never used a bread machine in my whole life. I prefer the old fashioned way of making bread. But we had such an overwhelming response to that question that we made a purchase of a bread machine. Now, I didn't go way high expensive. I didn't go way low. I just decided on a middle level bread machine and I really have fallen in love with it. Now it is not the main way that I make bread, but it is so convenient and the results are very, very tasty. And so I thought, why not take our bread machine with us on our extended trailer trip so we can have homemade bread. And of course, yes, we could buy bread at the store, but it's so much more fun and even more nutritious to make our own bread. And so I'm gonna share with you today a little bit of what I have learned about our bread maker. I'm gonna show you the bread maker so you can see what we're talking about. And then I have developed some bread mixes and here they are right here. He, these are the first three. This is white bread. And all you have to do is dump this in the bread machine with some liquid and maybe another fresh ingredient or two. And, um, and then you have it. And, and I got these containers at the dollar store. These were 50 cents a piece and this was a dollar. So this was just a great um, find for us at the dollar store. I, I would have done it in uh, canning jars, except they're glass. And I don't like to travel with glass in our trailer. Things get bumped around. This one is chili cheese bread. And then this one is cinnamon raisin bread. It's in a larger container because of the things that are on the inside. Now I have made up these recipes as I have packed them here. And you may or may not be able to have the same ingredients that I have used. Um, I have taken the recipes that are in a booklet that came with our um, bread machine and I have adjusted them some 
to adapt them to our food storage ingredients. This is a free download for you, and I'm going to put the address right here. Just go to our web page, and on that very home page, scroll to the very bottom of the page where we have a number of free downloads. This will be the last entry. I just put it up, so you can have these recipes too. So, let me show you how I package these. So, on the top, I have a little sticky with the name of what the uh, jar has in it, and then the other side of that sticky contains the recipe, so that I have the recipe in front of me when I'm ready to put it into the bread machine. In this little packet, I have the yeast. Now, um, the bread machine recipes call for the yeast to be added to a well that you make in the top of the um, dry ingredients, and so it is added separately. So I package the yeast separately in all of these. So this is just plain white bread. <clears throat> Chili cheese bread. This one I really had to adjust. So here again is a little package of yeast, and then these are all of the dry ingredients. Now, in my bread machine recipe book, this called for fresh cheese to be added, and buttermilk, and um, a jalapeno that had been seeded and chopped fine. Well, we can't put fresh things in here at all. So I opted for some of our freeze-dried things. And you can see here at the very bottom, here is our freeze-dried cheese. And it's hard. And um, it's dry, so it can go in the jar. The other thing was with the jalapeno. Jim and I don't care for jalapenos, but I did uh, freeze dry some green chili not too long ago, in fact, January of last year. And so this is freeze dried green chilies that I just crushed, and I have used those instead, and those are right here. And then it called for buttermilk. Well, luckily I had freeze dried buttermilk as well, and so I just put the powder to reconstitute into the amount called for in the recipe, and then added that amount to the recipe in water. So I've got the dry ingredients here for buttermilk, and then added the water instead of the wet buttermilk. For this one, this one requires just a little bit more. For both of these, you can just dump into the bread machine and let the machine do its thing, and two or three hours later, it's done and you have a home-baked loaf of bread, nice and hot, right out of the machine. So in this packet, I had to pack some raisins, which I did in a little um, baggie. And then I also packed the yeast, as I did before. And then here in a little larger, this is a two-ounce portion cup, that I have a cinnamon and sugar mixture. Because what happens with this one is that you let the bread machine go to a certain point, then you pause it, you pull the dough out, roll it out, sprinkle it with the cinnamon mixture, and then sprinkle the raisins on the top, and then you roll it up, tuck the ends under, and put it back in. And so there's a little interruption there. Now, um, these and the yeast is also in its little packet in there. So, so far I have these three, and as I experiment more, I'll be adding more as well. But just think how convenient it would be to be able to have um, these little uh, pre-made mixes ready to go to just dump, add water or milk, maybe um, uh, some other fresh ingredient, and walk away and let the machine do the work. Here is what is left of a loaf of this cinnamon raisin bread. It is so good. And we have used this for French toast. Oh my goodness, 
to die for. And I can imagine doing this loaf of bread in our trailer and then using it for breakfast for French toast as well. So there are lots of opportunities to do different things with these mixes. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I've kind of cleared the deck here, we're going to make today the chili cheese bread. And I'm really excited about it and it is a total experiment because in this recipe I've, I have dehydrated cheese, dehydrated chilies, and I have dry buttermilk. So I've had to compensate and add a little bit of extra water. And I don't know if the cheese and the chili are going to rehydrate in the wet dough as it mixes. So all of these things are things that we'll be looking for as this bread progresses. First, I want to introduce you to my bread maker. So Jim has gone up on a ladder. Um, this is a very lightweight, so light, very compact, which is what made me think about it for the trailer in the first place. This would be so easy to take with us. So a bread maker has an internal pan that is removable so that you can wash it. Now this will do up to a two pound loaf, but I'm nervous about doing a two pound loaf because a pound and a half loaves come clear up to this window during the rise time. So I pretty much stick to one and a half pound loaves. At the bottom, as you can see, it has a little paddle and that paddle does a great job for mixing and for kneading, which we'll show you. It also comes out. So this would ordinarily make this kind of an imprint in the bottom of the loaf of bread, which some people object to. I don't object to it. We're not fancy with our bread. So if we cut through the bottom part and it has a little slit in it for this, we just ignore it. So this goes in place here. We just eat it. Yes, we just eat it. And then, um, then the pan goes in and locks into place. Now, we have lots of options with this little machine. Older models don't have so many options, but I haven't been using a bread machine except for the last two months, and boy, have I ever used this one. So it has all of these different programs. And then um, select your program here. The color of the crust um, from very light to medium to dark and then you select the size of your loaf right here and here start and stop and so this is just such a versatile little machine and i'm liking it very very much so what you do with a bread machine is you put the liquid in the bottom and then you add the dry ingredients so i have put the ingredients here in reverse order that we're supposed to add them so that when we dump it out, they are in the correct order. With a bread machine, it lists the ingredients and it says add ingredients according to how they are listed. So I've done my best to try to do that. So the first thing that we're going to do for this, and this will be just a um, regular white bread program. This is our water and um, when you print out the recipe, you can get the amounts to all of these. Here is our butter, and the butter is uh, not quite melted. It's very soft. All right, so I'm pulling the yeast packet out, setting it aside. The buttermilk powder is on the top, and then when I dump it in, and I had to dump it like that, otherwise it wouldn't have gone in in the right order. So now we have our cheese on the top. And now I'm just going to make a little well here. Put the yeast in the well. Close it up. Turn it on. Program is number one for white bread, and I have the color. You see that's very light. You can see that right here, medium and dark, and I always go dark. Everything else is too anemic looking for me, so I always put it on dark. Size is one and a half, that's already set. So I'm gonna start. So that's what it looks like mixing. So 
So we'll give it a couple of minutes until it is, um, gets to the knead part, and I'll show you what kneading looks like. And then we're going to leave it alone until the bread is completely baked. So we'll be back in a couple minutes. This is the first kneading cycle. So you see it's all mixed together. And that paddle is just bumping the dough into the edges of the pan to start the development of the gluten. Now it goes through two or three kneading cycles for a few minutes. And then in just a few minutes, it will be in a rise segment. So we'll close this down and let it do its thing. And we'll bring you back when there's another change. The bread is now in its final rise. And if we read the screen, we have, 100, we have an hour and 34 minutes left before the bread is completely baked. This is the last rise, the proofing. So I'm going to open up the lid quickly so we can get a better look. There it is. It's looking really, really good. If this follows the pattern of other breads, it will rise up almost to the top of this glass. So we will be back at the next step. The buzzer just went off. We are done. So let's check to see what it looks like. Oh my goodness, it is beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to twist the handle to release it and pull it out and take it over to the wire rack. Now I just turned the machine off because it does have a keep warm setting and it will keep the bread warm after it has finished baking. It has a um, setting so that you can put the ingredients in at night, set the timer for when you want it to start and you can have hot bread in the morning. So let's get this bread out, take a look at how it looks. Okay, so there it is. We have little cheese spots all over. I can see some, I think, green for yeah, the... Some. Yeah, you see some. Okay, so we're just going to let this sit here for a little while until it cools down, and then we will slice it and bring you back when we slice it and have a little bit of a taste. So see you soon. Here's the end result, and it's cool enough to cut. Now I'm feeling it's a little bit soft right here and not right here. So we may have an air bubble here. We'll just have to see. So I'm going to turn it on its side and we're just going to cut it to see what it looks like on the inside. Moment of truth here. Okay, so no, we don't have an air bubble. It's just a little bit softer here. So the crumb is... Um, is good. We're seeing the cheese. It looks to me like I'm not seeing much of the um, powdered green chilies, but they it may be all consumed just or, or mixed in with the rest of the dough. So I'm going to cut another piece and see what this looks like. Really a beautiful crust on this. Just imagine what this will be like in our trailer. So here we go. Isn't that beautiful? All right, time for the tasting. Oh, there's a little piece of the green chili I see. Oh, and another one. So yeah, it's there. We've got some. It's a wonderful taste. There are no hard bits of cheese, so I'm thrilled the cheese was able to get soft and even melty in the process without reconstituting it before we made it. Oh, the bits of cheese that are in the crust are a little bit hard, but the ones that are showing in the crumb are just as soft as they can be. I can definitely taste the cheese throughout. And there in the background, there's that little hint of the heat from the green chili. So if you really like a lot of bite or a lot of heat in your cheese bread, then you may want to 
adjust the amount of the chili or the type of chili that you put in this bread. Basically, we have a great success with this chili cheddar bread with the adjustments that we made to the dry ingredients to use freeze-dried ingredients. So don't forget to download the um, three recipes from our uh, webpage. And while you're there, you can click on Trail Grazer Amazon Store and you can find this bread maker if you are interested in looking at it. I just checked it out uh, while we were waiting for the bread to cool and it is 30% off right now. So it's just a little over $100, I think 120 something, which I think is a really good price for the bread maker. This is the only one that we have in our Amazon store because we don't put anything in our Amazon store that we have not tried out ourselves. So I am really looking forward to traveling this summer on our longer trailer trips with this bread maker so we can have a variety of breads. One more thing I just want to mention, in these um, prepackaged mixes, I would not put the little yeast packet in these until right as we are leaving on our trip because I don't want these sitting on my pantry shelf for months waiting for me to use them with the yeast going bad. And so I will always put fresh yeast in just before we go on a trip. So that's the only other thing I wanted to remind you of. But I think this is great and I hope you're able to try some of these uh, bread maker mixes in your own bread makers, adjusting however you may need to. So thanks for being with us and we will see you on the trail. We hope sooner than later.